Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kodrowski and this Organic Chemistry Lab video covers a gas chromatography of citrus soil experiment. This is part one, Introduction and GC Theory. Citrus peels contain volatile compounds that give them their characteristic odors. There are three major components present in many citrus fruits and I'm showing those below. On the left is a compound called limonene, which has a boiling point of 176 degrees Celsius. It has a stereogenic center, which is indicated by a star. Limonene is chiral, which means it occurs as two enantiomers, and these have different odors. But in the GC experiment today, these will show up as a single peak. The molecule in the middle is called geraniol. It has a boiling point of 234 degrees Celsius, and on the right is a compound called neural, which has a boiling point of 236. Geraniol and neural are stereoisomers of each other. They're cis-trans isomers about one of the alkene double bonds. In this experiment, we'll extract the essential oil of citrus fruits and isolate samples of citrus oil. We'll analyze the citrus oil samples using gas chromatography, or GC. This is a new type of chromatography that we'll be using for the first time. We will determine which of these materials is present in the fruit and determine the percentage of each. Gas chromatography will allow us to do that. Some learning objectives are described on this slide. At the end of this experiment, you'll be able to describe the compounds and citrus peels that give them their distinctive odors. You'll be able to describe how a gas chromatograph works. You'll be able to compare and contrast gas chromatography with TLC and column chromatography and describe their similarities and differences. And you'll be able to use gas chromatography to analyze a complicated mixture and identify and quantify key components. Some safety items for this experiment are described on this slide. Hexane is highly flammable and its vapors are harmful, so you should avoid skin contact, inhalation of vapors, and keep this well away from sources of ignition. GC syringes and needles are sharp, so you'll need to be careful with those. The GC instruments are very hot at their injection port, and I'll point out where that is, so you should avoid touching that. This slide introduces gas chromatography, or GC. GC is a type of chromatography that separates volatile mixtures by vaporizing compounds and pushing the gases through a long, thin tube called a column. I'll draw a diagram showing a cross-section of a column to illustrate what is happening inside of it. Imagine that these lines represent the cross-section of a long, thin tube. The inside of the column is coated with a very thin layer of a waxy polymer material that acts as the stationary phase. I'll draw that in now. The stationary phase is represented here in light blue. The mobile phase that moves in gas chromatography is a pressurized gas, which is usually helium or hydrogen. The mobile phase moves through as a gas, and compounds associate either with the stationary phase, where they're still, or in the mobile phase, when they move. GC separates mixtures based primarily on the boiling points of compounds. There are some exceptions, but boiling point is the key property in the columns that we're using. Higher boiling compounds tend to spend more time in the stationary phase, and they take longer to elute than lower boiling compounds. On the left, there are two molecules starting at the same place, a high boiling molecule represented in blue and a low boiling molecule represented in green. As the mobile phase moves, it carries them along, but they move at different rates because the high boiling compound spends more time in the stationary phase. The low boiling compound spends less time in the stationary phase and therefore moves faster through the column. Boiling point is the key property that determines how much time a compound will spend in the stationary phase versus the mobile phase. The amount of time it takes a compound to move through the column is known as its retention time. This is a value that's analogous to RF value in TLC. RF was retention factor in TLC. Retention time in gas chromatography is a measure of how fast molecules move through the column. Retention times of unknowns can be used to identify them by comparison to the retention times of known standards. If you have an unknown compound that you want to identify, if you can find an authentic standard that has the same retention time, it could be that molecule. It's the same way that unknowns are identified in TLC. On this slide, we're going to compare and contrast TLC, column chromatography, and GC. The first thing we'll talk about is stationary phase. In thin layer chromatography, it's usually silica gel, as it is in column chromatography, and in gas chromatography, it's this waxy polymer. The stationary phase support in TLC is a plate, in column chromatography, it's a column, and in gas chromatography, it's a thin tube. The tube in gas chromatography is very thin. It's about 0.25 millimeters, about the thickness of a human hair. The mobile phase in TLC is a solvent, as it is in column chromatography, but in gas chromatography, it's a gas. The property affecting retention in thin layer chromatography is polarity, and this is definitely true with silica gel. Column chromatography is the same. If it's using silica gel, it's polarity. And in gas chromatography, it's boiling points that affect retention. What makes compounds move faster on the various forms of chromatography? Well, in thin layer chromatography, increasing the mobile phase polarity causes all spots to move faster up the plate. In column chromatography, also increasing the mobile phase polarity causes compounds to move faster down the column. And in gas chromatography, it's an increase in column temperature that causes all compounds to move faster through the column. 
In the next video in the series, I'll cover the GC instrument and how to use it to collect and interpret data. If you found this video useful, check out the next one in the series or watch the prior video, and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. My name is Brant Kudrowski. Thanks for watching.